So this is a quick explanation on how we're going to do the math for the <coughs> free falling body slab. So in the procedure, what it says to do is was to set these photo gates at certain uh, centimeters, and here is 40 centimeters and 100 centimeters. So we can zoom in a bit, and you should be able to set these exactly on those values. So one's at 40, the other one's at 100. Now it's important to note that the ball here is starting at 20 centimeters. This is going to have an effect on our data later on. So what we do is we click on the ball, the ball falls, that's the total time that the ball took to fall from 20 centimeters to the bottom. And these photo gates measure the time at which the ball passes them. So it took 0 0.05 seconds to get to 40 centimeters and 0.35 seconds to get to 100 centimeters. Now down here, you've also got these other things that you're going to set, 50 and 120, 60 and 130, 80 and 140, 90 and 160, and 110 and 190 centimeters. And you'll measure the times that the ball takes to go past those uh, centimeter points as well. And those will also go into your lab report. So going back to the lab report, Okay, here's a lab report here, and this is where we're going to put our data. So the first set of data you'll put in will just simply be positions and times. And we don't take in anything else into account at this point. So for the first one, let me get my tablet here. And we're looking at the position of, the first one was uh, 40 centimeters, and the other one was 100 centimeters. But you'll notice what it's looking for is, is the position in meters. Now, in order to get meters, we're going to have to take that and divide it by 100 to get meters. So that'd be 0 0.40 meters, and this one will be uh, 1.0 meters. Now when you're putting the stuff into the into the cells here for the data, you don't need to put the unit. If the unit is here, then it's assumed that everything has that unit. So you don't even really need to put the meters when you're doing the actual data entry. For times, it was uh, 0 0.05 seconds and 0.35 seconds. And those were directly off the photo gates. Obviously you're going to have a whole bunch of other data here for other distances. Now in the second part, you're going to take this data and you're going to find a delta y and delta t squared. So let me explain where the delta y comes from. The so these are the uh, these are distances and these are times. Those of course are in seconds. Now if you want the delta y the delta y is equal to the change in distance. Now what's going to be really important here is to remember that in each instance we started our ball at 20 centimeters. So if it went to 40 centimeters, it only traveled 20 centimeters, the difference between 40 and 20. So in order to figure out the delta y for the first one, what we'll do is we'll do 40 centimeters minus 20 centimeters, and that's going to be equal to 20 centimeters. Now we'll convert that to meters, and it will be 0 0.20 meters. For the second one, again, it traveled to 100, 100 centimeters, but it started at 20. So the change in distance is going to be 80 centimeters, or 0 0.80 meters. So that is going to end up being our delta y values. So the delta y
will be uh, 0 0.20 meters oh sorry delta y in meters 0 0.20 and the other one will be 0 0.80 we also need the delta t squared now how do we get that well we have the times let's go back to the times up here the times are 0 0.05 seconds and 0.35 seconds now remembering that the times always started at zero these actually happen to be delta t values as well so it took 0 0.05 seconds to fall that far and 0.35 seconds to fall that far as it falls to, to, uh, to 1.0 meters or a, a difference of 80 centimeters or 0 0.80 meters the delta t squared value then what we can do is we take the 0 0.05 and multiply it by itself that's to get it squared and that gives us our value for delta t squared 0 0.0025 and the other one 0.35 we multiply that by itself as well and that comes out to be 0 0.1225 so now we can take those delta y's and delta t's and do what we need to do with them. The unit on the delta t squared is going to be seconds squared because it's seconds times seconds but we'll, we'll get to that later and we'll see how that affects the outcome of our calculation. Alright so the next thing you're going to do is graph these. Now you're going to have a whole lot more points because you would have found a whole lot more differences and gotten some more delta t squared values but I'm just going to do it for these two values that I've calculated you're going to have a lot more data you'll put a chart title in here you'll put an x-axis and a y-axis now it says in the directions that you will graph the delta y on the y-axis and the delta t squared will go on the x-axis so on the y-axis we'll have let's go back to our data here we'll have uh, 0 point, sorry, point 0 0.20 and in the on the X here we'll have point 0 0.0025 so on the X axis we'll have point 0 0.0025 it's important that you put the X in the X and the Y in the Y and the Delta Y goes here and that's going to be point 0.20 and over here will be point 0.1225 and point Eight, zero. Now when I do that I'll come up with a graph and the graph will have points on it and then I can click on this button show trend line and once I do that the trend line will give me a slope and that's all I'm really interested in it's a slope so then it it asks how we could calculate G using this data here now if you remember what you learned in high school regarding slopes it's always change in y over change in x so that's what we're going to be looking for we change in y over change in x so let's go to that and take a look the equation we're given is this one here delta y equals half g delta t squared now remember g is the acceleration due, due to gravity and that's what we're trying to find so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of rearranging here so we can isolate g and get g by itself so if I multiply both sides by 2 I'll end up with 2 delta y equals g delta t squared and then if I divide both sides by delta t squared I'll end up with this 2 delta y over delta t squared now if you look at our graph that delta y over delta t squared will be the slope because the slope is always change in y over change in x y is delta y and x is delta t squared so it's not a coincidence delta y over delta t squared will equal the slope the slope we get by looking at the show trend line and there's the slope there so from there we can easily calculate 
what the value of g should be. After you've done that, you will figure out a percent error. Now g theory is the g that you got from your slope up here. G x, uh, sorry, g theory is, I apologize, g theory is uh, 9.81 meters per second squared. G experiment is the one that you came up with based on this slope. And G theory, of course, is what I just said, 9.81. So we put 9.81 minus what we got divided by what? Uh, divided by 9.81 times 100%. That gives you the percent error. The one you come up with should be close, but it won't be exactly the same as 9.81. Don't expect it to be. I'm going to give you a little bit of guidance here on how to solve this problem number three. So an astronaut who weighs 805 newtons on Earth lands on a planet that has three times the mass and twice the radius of Earth. What is the astronaut's weight on the new planet? Show your work. So the first thing you'll do is you will look for the equation in the background of the lab manual and it was force or F equals G M1 M2 over R squared. Now the g value is a constant value, don't worry too much about that. The m1 is the mass of an object, m2 is the mass of another object. r squared is the distance between the center of masses of these two bodies squared. So if you're talking about an astronaut on the Earth, for example, it's not a very good picture of the Earth, but there's the astronaut. The center of mass of the Earth is the center. So the distance between the astronaut and the center of mass of the Earth is essentially going to be the radius of the Earth, which is going to be r. Now that distance is squared in the equation, so it's r squared. Now here's what we know. The weight on Earth then, which we know is 805 newtons, is equal to g m1, which is the mass of the astronaut, the mass of the Earth, times the mass of the Earth divided by the square of the radius of the Earth. Now, the weight on the new planet, according to the problem, is that we know that the mass of the new planet is three times the mass of the Earth. So I can just go ahead and plug three times the mass of the Earth in here. And we're also told that the radius is twice the radius of the Earth. So I've got two times the radius of the Earth in here. Now that's the end of what I'm going to tell you about this. Because now you've got to figure out how much more or less this astronaut will weigh on the new planet given this information here.